all of us watching this are also forming microscopic cancers in our body right now. Cancer is actually like a pimple. They're always forming. Our immune system is more powerful than we ever thought. So powerful, in fact, that if we had cancer, our immune system can wipe it out even if the cancer spread. So there is some biotech or pharmaceutical company working on it to develop some drugs. I will tell you that Mother Nature has beat drug companies to the punch because there are tons of foods, more than 200 foods that I write about in my book, Eat to Beat Disease, that actually have the ability, the proven ability through science and research to activate our health defenses. So I'll dive into them and tell you about some of the foods. Our first health defense system is angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is how our body grows blood vessels. We have, all everyone watching this now, has 60,000 miles worth of blood vessels packed inside our body. So that's an amazing amount of uh, highways and byways that deliver oxygen and nutrients. Whatever we're eating gets delivered through our blood vessels into our cells and our organs. So how does angiogenesis work? It really feeds and, nu and gives us nutrition to be able to be healthy. However, it is also a system that helps us fight cancer. Why? Because although we got 60,000 miles, our body prevents extra blood vessels from growing when they're not necessary. And in fact, this is one of the reasons why we don't develop cancer more often because all of us watching this are also forming microscopic cancers in our body right now. Cancer is actually like a pimple. They're always forming. We've got 40 trillion cells in our body. They're dividing. They make a couple of mistakes and bingo, you've got little microscopic cancers. But these little microscopic cancers can never grow up because they don't have a blood supply. So they get to be about the size of the tip of a ballpoint pen and they cannot expand any further. They sit there and then our immune system wings by like patrol cars looking for bad guys and you see this microscopic cancer and it takes them right out and it'll never be a problem for most of us. Now, when tumors are able to hijack our blood supply, which can occur, uh, uh, then they uh, uh, recruit their own private blood supply and now the cancers get our fed, they get oxygen and nutrients just like our healthy organs. And this is the research I've done. When blood vessels touch a tumor, a tiny microscopic cancer, it, it allows that cancer to grow explosively. A tumor that is not fed by blood vessels, tip of a bubble point pin. Tumor that actually is fed, once a blood vessel touches it, will grow 16,000 times in two weeks. And the same blood vessels that beat the cancer allow cancer cells to escape into the circulation. We call this metastases. So how what do we need to do? We need to shore up our body's ability to prevent extra blood vessels from growing. Our health defense system is naturally hardwired to do that. How do we actually do that better? Well, it turns out there are more than a hundred different foods that have been studied. I've studied almost all of them that can enhance your body's ability to cut off the blood supply to that are that might be feeding cancer. So you keep your good, healthy circulation. You prevent the extra blood vessels from feeding cancers. What are some of these foods? Tomatoes. Tomatoes contain a bioactive natural chemical called lycopene. And clinical studies have shown that tomatoes can reduce the risk of prostate cancer. Prostate cancer requires a blood vessel blood supply in order to grow to become a problem. That men who eat two to three servings of cooked tomatoes, tomato sauce, two to three times a week, actually have a 30% lower risk of developing prostate cancer. Why? Because the bioactive in the tomato sauce prevents the blood tumors from recruiting those blood vessels. Now, in men that do develop prostate cancers, the more tomato sauce you eat, the less aggressive the prostate cancer actually is. So this has been studied, by the way, in 30,000 men. This is like a human study, not just a theoretical study. And what I've done is gone back into the lab to start really digging and digging and digging and working out exactly what the mechanism of, ans of, of action is. So by the way, this also works for breast cancer, but in a different way as well. Another anti-angiogenic cancer starving food, soy. Now there's an urban legend that soy actually causes breast cancer is a risk completely wrong urban legend. Soy has contained phytosterols, which the, does have a plant estrogen, which looks nothing like human estrogen, blocks human estrogen. It's like a mother nature's tamoxifen. And studies have actually shown that eating soy lowers the risk of the danger of breast cancer. In fact, it improves survival in women who actually have breast cancer. If you've got breast cancer or you're at risk for breast cancer, the more soy you eat, the lower your risk is, the better your survival. So other foods, black raspberries, cacao. I, I actually studied 
um, the chocolate uh, that was used to make this. And we actually found that it kills leukemia cells and lymphoma cells. So dark chocolate also cuts off the blood supply of feeding cancer. Pomegranate juice, um, green tea. I wanted to show you this. I, I, I'm actually rarely found without a cup of green tea around. This is a whole leaf green tea, but you can use matcha. You can use iced tea works as well as hot tea. I always tell a story in my book. I had a great uncle that lived to 104 and he lived at the base of a tea mountain and every single day he drank like six cups of green tea and stayed very physically active walking up the hills and trails uh, as well. Um, green tea, by the way, has been shown to reduce your risk of colon cancer. Why? Because the polyphenols in green tea cut off the blood supply um, feeding cancers. Now, you know, one of the things that um, I've been studying is how much do you need to eat in order to get that? I want to show you. Blueberries are anti-androgenic. I had some this morning for breakfast. Some of my favorites uh, love blueberries. The color blueberries it's called by anto is made by anthocyanins, a natural dye. One cup a week has been shown in human studies to fight breast cancer. Okay, uh, also boost your immune system. Black raspberries. You need a little bit more if you are fighting bladder cancer. Seven cups a day of black raspberries can fight breast uh, bladder cancer. But if you're trying to fight cardiovascular disease, it can also improve heart health as well. And you only need four individual berries a day. So again, food doses is something really cool that we're working on. Walnuts. Now, walnuts have been shown to help improve outcomes for colon cancer. Okay, if, you've got, if you're fighting colon cancer, how do you actually lower, um, uh, how do you improve your odds? How do you fight colon cancer better? Nuts contain fiber, which feature gut microbiomes, also anti-hydrogenic. Turns out you need only 11 walnuts per week, 22 halves of walnuts. So think about that. You're watching Netflix and you're snacking on walnuts. If you have 22 of them over the course of a week, that's easy to do. That's, you know, just a two or th three of them a day, three halves a day. Um, that actually is a dose that's been effective, uh, shown effective through studies, human studies for colon cancer.